Welcome back, folks. We are joined by my good friend and radio colleague. Uh, he's Frank Morano. He's an on-air personality and host. You can hear him every day. Um, check out 77 WABC Talk Radio. He's also on the WABC affiliate out in the island. What's the call letters, Frank? 107.1 FM. Well, I know you, Steve, like to hang with the hoi polloi, spend all your weekends, not at the Jersey Shore, but at the Hamptons. On your way out to the Hamptons, listen to me, listen to the whole station on 107.1 FM. Frank, I love the Hamptons, but you know better than anyone, I'm a Jersey Shore guy. <laughs> that I do. I've seen the photographs of your uh, incredibly, uh, incredibly impressive palatial estate, although my invitation to that palatial estate has yet to come to fruition. Team, do me a favor. Edit that part out. No. Uh, hey, and by the way, you can hear Frank every Sunday night from 7 to 9 p.m. And also every day, if you check out the uh, web, WABC website, WABCradio.com. Hey, Frank, here we go. We're taping this at the end of August. It'll be seen before and after the election. Let's not play prognostication games. Let's not play the horse race. Let's well, not no, ask you this. No, that's easy to do. Why don't we just tape two versions of this? One me predicting Trump will win, one me predicting Biden will win, and then just air whichever one comes to fruition. Frank, I told you we're more about policy. We're more about bigger know, pictures. Know, Here's the question. Yes. Whether President Trump wins or not, whether Joe Biden becomes a president or not, give me some adjectives to describe the Trump presidency, first term, last term, whatever it's going to be. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to say chaotic. That's one that keeps to mind. Two, nationalistic. And three, different. Uh, four, unconventional. And uh, five, I'll, I'll add patriotic, which could be similar to nationalistic. You know, I'm glad you mentioned the patriotic thing, because as we're literally doing this program, the Republican convention is going on, again, be seen afterwards. You and I have always had this, and I don't think we disagree on this. We disagree on a lot of policy issues, but we don't disagree on civility. We don't disagree on being respectful. Are you okay, just not just as a, a, a great broadcaster and personality on the air, but as just a hardworking guy from Staten Island, are you okay with the demonization Republicans towards Democrats, Democrats toward Republicans, the name calling and everything else that goes along with it. You okay with that? Uh, no, I mean, to say I'm the exact opposite of okay with that. Uh, I, um, you know, I'm a, a Trump supporter and was for many years, even prior to the 2016 candidacy, I thought the first lady's call to civility in her convention speech was exactly right on the money. And I was absolutely, and am absolutely sick that so many Trump supporters choose to focus on Kamala Harris's prior romantic relationships from 25 or 30 years ago, rather than explain why they disagree with her on policy or stylistically or X, Y, Z, other reason that they, she wouldn't make a good president or vice president. Instead, I hear every day uh, one of my fellow Trump supporters say, oh, she slept her way to the top, slept her way to the top. That kind of personal vilification of political Political adversaries. That is part of the reason why we're in the situation that we're in. We have people not even willing to share a meal with folks they disagree with politically. And I can't imagine that ends in a very good place. So here's the really tricky question, an important question based on what you just said, and even more than that. With the degree of polarization, Frank, with the degree of um, nastiness and the divisiveness in our nation, let's just say this program, this segment, seen before and after. Say it's a close election. Say there are a fair number of people who are listening to the president as we speak right now saying this election is rigged, the Democrats are going to try to steal it. What happens, Frank Morano, if we really don't have a peaceful transition if the president hypothetically loses and Joe Biden wins? What do we do? Well, look, uh, luckily, we have not only laws that uh, that govern that, but the 12th Amendment, right? So we've seen tricky presidential elections before. You and the viewers will remember what happened in the year 2000. People may not remember what happened in the election of 1800 or the election of 1876. Ultimately, um, if there's disputed electoral vote counts or states that are refusing to certify slates of electors, it'll be up to Congress to determine who Frank, the Frank, I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm not even talking about the constitutional, the legal process. I'm talking about 
millions of Americans not accepting the outcome, regardless no, of what it is. Problem. It's a big problem. And I think, uh, honestly, people in both camps uh, deserve a lot of the blame for that. You know, uh, I would love to see um, Joe Biden and Donald Trump do a press conference together, um, right, say, maybe after the first debate or the week early voting starts and say, look, we don't agree on anything. And not only that, we think pretty ill of the other guy's character, but um, right. we're really counting on whomever wins this election to be able to rally the 300 million people that you're going to represent. And George H.W. Bush, who um, you know, was really distraught over losing to Bill Clinton in 1992, he basically said exactly that after he lost the election to uh, Bill Clinton. He said, you know, look, he needs our support. If he governs anywhere near as well as he can campaign, we're going to be in pretty good and shape. And Al Gore did it in 2000. He told his people, I'm not the president. The other guy is George president. And, you know, it happens on a bipartisan basis. In 1960, there's a lot of people to this day that believe that that presidential election was stolen from Illinois Richard Nixon. West Virginia. Nixon could have carried on with legal fights, with uh, trying to cast Kennedy as an illegitimate president, but because Nixon cared, at least he appeared to care, more about the country than his own presidential ambitions, he have rallied the country in supporting the result, disputed as Let it may Let me ask you this, Frank. The role of talk radio, particularly, and, and WABC <laughs> with um, John Cassidy, TD's the, the, the new owner, not so new at this point. What do you see as the role of a station like yours in talk radio overall? and helping the country not only have a spirited, respectful dialogue, even where we disagree, but having people understand that we're all in this thing together. Well, talk radio is now more important than it's ever been, especially stations like WABC, because, and it may seem counterintuitive, because people think, well, wait a minute, why is radio important now? Not only do I have TV, not only do I have podcasts, but I can think of whatever I want to listen to, whether it's music, whether it's news, whatever else, and just type it on my phone at any given moment and immediately have it come up within eight seconds. Local talk radio and local media in general is more important than it ever has been because right now we're at a place and time where it's much easier to find out what's happening in Baghdad than it is happening in what's happening in Bayonne and what's happening in Brooklyn. Now, with this station, especially this is true with so many newspapers cutting their newsroom, cutting their staffs, folding entirely, you have an opportunity to learn about what's really happening in New York. New York and New Jersey are the most interesting places in the the world. We have the best food in the world. We have the most colorful politicians. We have the most colorful characters. And every corner has an incredible story to tell. And unfortunately, heretofore, those stories haven't been told. On shows like mine and on stations like WABC, those local stories are going to be told. You're going to hear fiery opinions on all the local issues of the day. You want to start a real debate? Ask someone where the best slice of pizza is in the New York and New Jersey area. You want to start a fiery debate? You ask, yeah. what do you think about them canceling alternate side of the street parking the day after Columbus Day. And you will see New Yorkers get fired up. That's the kind of passion that we're going to bring back to New York radio. And that's the kind of news that unfortunately has been far too lacking, even on so-called local talk stations. That's Frank Moran. You can hear him every night from 7 to uh, 9 on WABC, 77 WABC. And also check him out on 107.1 FM, which is a, an affiliate or connected very much to WABC. And you can catch them every day, Frank, the uh, website again, WABC. WABCradio.com. You can listen live or you can listen to the podcast and just click, click subscribe or uh, search Frank Morano wherever you get your podcast. Thank you, my friend. All the best. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Steve. I'm Steve Arbaro. Thanks for watching. See you next time.